is uh, Pascal uh, Volumeter from, uh, he's a global campaigner at avaz.org, and he'll present the power of social media and the web for campaigning for social change. Avaz is an online community of over 17 million members who take action to ensure that the views and values of the world's people inform the decisions that affect us all. Maybe I'm not speaking loud enough. Is it on now? No, it's not on. No. Yes. Okay. Now we're getting there. So yeah, power oops. Technology. There's always some technology issues. Um, so yes, we had a lot. Um, thank you very much for all the previous speakers and thank you, Omar, for having me here. We heard a lot about global health and we heard a lot about technology. And I'm trying to kind of move us a bit away and move us into a more like in the campaigning side of things because in order to have social change, we need to campaign for it because nowadays change just doesn't happen like this. We need people to make that change happen. So um, I'm starting off um, to talk about the power of online organizing. So basically, if we're talking about the internet and the use of the internet for social change, most of the organizations will speak about the term online organizing because that's the kind of term that is used to describe it. And um, it is a very powerful tool and it, um, the you know, internet allows us to use this technology to mobilize people and um, to combine, as I say here, individual efforts to have a powerful collective, fo collective force at the end to achieve change. So in my presentation, I'm trying to outline a bit like what is online organizing, how does a campaign look like, how is it structured, and then I will speak a lot about the work that Avaz is doing and give you the examples how we use the internet to have concrete impact. So basically, as I said, um, online organizing allows people to connect with each other. So in our modern world, we all have jobs, we're at the university, we're studying, we're working, we have loans, we have debt, so we have to pay for all this. So how is it possible to be an activist on the side? It's very difficult. I mean, a lot of people um, they, they, who are engaged in social change, they are engaged with all their heart and it takes a lot of time. You need to do a lot of reading. There's a lot of information out there. You need to actually um, make a triage of the information. So how is it possible to be an activist nowadays? So a lot of organizations like ours, we're using the internet to communicate with members and to mobilize people for concrete moments to achieve um, an impact. And um, while you know, online campaigns, they usually start on the internet. So basically you receive an email, and there is a link and we say, please click here and take this action. So will that actually have an impact in the real world? No. So basically every online campaign needs an offline component and only if there is an effective offline component you will have impact. So we see the internet and, and email as a, as a tool and um, I'm actually aligning with my previous speaker who says technology is a tool and you, you need to know how to use it, like me. I'm not doing a lot of speeches, I'm usually in front of my computer so I don't know how to use my microphone so we had some technical issues and um, the whole history of Avaaz is, is, is also um, characterized by technical issues because we have been building 
um, the platform over the last five years, and I'm pretty sure Omar, in the next five years, while building in end ignorance um, tech problems, they will, be, um, th they will be important to solve them. So one last thing before I move on is, when we talk about social media and the internet and, and the use of all this for social change, we, we tend to forget that there is really just one revolutionary tool, and that's email. Email has changed everything. Email is a free way of communicating um, between each other. So what we do at Avaz is we send our supporters uh, an email and ask them to take action. So at this point, who has heard of Avaz? Who receives our emails? One, two, three, four. Quite a few people. So um, we're still a bit ignorant. So go to Avaz.org and, um, and, <laughs> and check it out. But basically, email is re really the tool that makes it all happen. And there's a lot of hype about Twitter, about Facebook. But I tell you, no one really knows how to use these tools effectively for social change. Email is, at this point, and will still you know, be the, the predominant tool for, for creating communities, um, activist communities, to, to engage in change. So this is our website. And um, of ours, as, as it says here, is a global web movement to bring people-powered politics to decision makers everywhere. Why is this important? Because decision makers, they don't really know what people want. So the internet and technology allows us to actually collect the voices and opinions of hundreds of thousands, millions of people, and bring these voices to decision makers and inform them about what we citizens want. So there is somehow a transparency and accountability um, mechanism in there. So this is, this, is, this is the power of the internet. So briefly about Avaz. Avaz means voice in many languages or song um, in Farsi and Urdu and Hindi. And we just love that, that concept of the voices of the people influence the decision makers. Um, 17 million members, we're growing by about 150,000 new subscribers uh, a week. And we operate our list in 16 languages. And we are operating it with a small global team on six continents. Um, when we started off five years ago, we were like seven people. And now we're about 70 people. So we're growing rapidly. Important point, we are entirely funded through small donations. And this is another important element what technology can do. It allows organizations like ours to be independent from, from corporations, from governments, from vested interests. And, and I think this is really key to understand why of us and, and why you know, the internet can really change campaigning. We are entirely member driven. We have member surveys, so people, they tell us what, they, what they'd like to campaign on. So we have an interaction with our membership um, on, on this every year, every week. We do several surveys. We're very scientific about the way we work. We, we test our emails. We look how many people get involved if a campaign we call it doesn't fly, then it just means that not enough people take action. We don't impose campaigns on people. We, we actually see what they like, and then we adapt to our campaigns. We're multi-issue, and that is very important, because we, just, we don't work only on health or on the environment or human rights, but we, we, we work on corruption, we work on accountability, and we, we do a lot of, um, you'll see later in the examples, a lot of concrete work also. Um, for example, one of the big areas is breaking the different blackouts. So when you have um, social movements, like now in the Arab Spring, the first thing that dictatorships do, they just cut the internet. So what do you do if you don't have internet? How do you organize? So um, we, we work with these activist groups. We provide them technology, but I will speak a bit later on that. So we la launched, it, launched in 2007. So basically, members, of us members, they sign petitions. So this is probably, um, most of our campaigns are petition campaigns. But they also donate money to fund media campaigns, for example, or direct actions. Um, they do, they email um, their targets, like the governments. They're calling their governments. And they also go to constituency meetings and talk with the with their, um, with their members of parliament. Or they organize offline protests and events. And um, again, everything just to make sure that actually the decision makers know what people want. And you know, a lot of the time in our world, there is a huge disconnect between those people who take the decisions and actually what people, what we all in this room think, what, what our values are. I think if we would take the decisions, there, there wouldn't be any wars. You know, or the climate crisis would probably, you know, we, would, we would have found a solution. So the idea is really to bring 
to bring these, these, these opinions and these values to the decision makers and confront them with the citizens and say, hey, that's what we want. And usually they only hear from the corporate lobbyists and um, so it's refreshing for them as well to engage with citizens. Um, one thing that is important to understand about online campaigning or online organizing is that it's not just use the internet or run one campaign, run one petition. As I said, you need to have a real world impact. So we are campaigners. We just use the internet for our campaigns. So I, I say there is a moment, from moment to movement and beyond, and I think that's really important. If you build your community, and Avaaz is a multi-issue community, you need to start telling a narrative. You need to start get people engaged and motivated about the broader picture. Because back in the day, people, they would mo mobilize around the environment or they would mobilize around one issue. Nowadays, the internet allows us to actually reach many more people and actually get these people on board on a lot of issues. So what we do is every week we campaign on something else. But in order for the people to get motivated and, and, and keep on participating, you need to create a movement. So um, um, where I wanted to go here is to effective elements or key elements for a campaign. And we use these like, there's like three, three points that are really crucial. And they are totally valid for any offline campaign that you do, for any online campaign. But there is always a crisis unity. It's a moment of crisis or opportunity. It's a conference where some decision makers far away from public scrutiny will debate about climate change or they will debate about the internet, the future of the internet. Right now in Dubai, there is 193 delegations debating on whether to include the internet in some sort of weird treaty that is over 14 years old and has no relation to the internet. But this is a real moment. Um, it's a tipping point. So what we do is we identify these moments. And for the last 20 years, these moments of global awareness, they, they have been coming more faster and faster. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the, the conscious of the world's people has been on more and more of these moments. And um, so it happens that on human rights you have a moment tomorrow and then next week you have something on the environment. So there's lots of moments coming up. So what we're trying to do is we, we try to work on as many moments as possible. So in order for people to get engaged and that it actually makes sense, you need a theory of change. So why does it, this action that you're proposing actually has an impact and will make a difference. And here there's a really complicated sentence. It's a cause and effect sequence that begins with something the reader can tangibly do and ends with the resolution of the crisis unity. So basically, conference happening in Dubai. Um, you're sending this email out, ask people to take an action. But how do you actually communicate this to the, to the, the, to the decision makers there? So you have to think about all that and um, of course, the third part is the ask, so you need to make sure that actually the ask makes sense and um, that the ask is linked to your theory of change and the ask needs to resolve your crisis unity. So I give you an, a very concrete example. So here we have, click below, below to sign this urgent petition. As soon as we reach 500,000 signatures, it will be delivered through full page ads in the Financial Times that Avaaz will distribute to all UN delegates at the entry of the conference venue in New York. Forward this email to everyone you know. So basically here in this ask, you, you know already, okay, if I sign here, there will be this ad and someone will actually physically show the Financial Times that everyone reads, you know, in the diplomatic circles, it's the Financial Times and it costs a shitload of money as well. So you, you show people that you're serious about and this is just one example. So here's another example of an ad that we did already three years ago, but it was an ad in the Jakarta Post and it shows this crisis unity. So it was climate negotiations and we portrayed the, um, the Bali sh Titanic ship and, and our three leaders here, we all love George Bush and Stephen Harper is probably even worse and what's worse that he's still in power. Fukuda, they changed several times but, um, in Japan, but basically we portrayed these three leaders. We, n we were naming and shaming them and we're showing everyone, okay, this is, they're driving this ship, they're blocking these climate negotiations. So either they hit the iceberg and sink the boat, the world, or they actually na navigate around. So, um, so basically we did the ad in the Jakarta Post, it got distributed to all